Welcome to the stage, Christer Hjerberg. So it's May 2019, and I'm on a flight from Gothenburg to Mallorca, Spain. And I'm sitting in between two young men who I don't know, and they are going on and on and on across me about the bars, the nightclubs, and the wild boozy parties they're going to once they arrive. And they are driving me crazy. So I put on my noise cancelling headphones and finally silence. I open up my laptop and I read through my email draft one final time. And this is an email I've been writing, rewriting and tweaking for over a month now. But now the moment is here. So I make sure that the email is addressed to everyone at the company. I connect to the in-flight Wi-Fi, and then I press send. And the email begins with the Looney Tunes, that's all folks, image. And below that, a headline, when we become you. And in the rest of the email, I make it really clear that this is it. After 22 years, I'm out. And the, the company I had just left is a 100 plus person creative agency that I had put so much energy and passion and just even love into. But this is it. And I was sure that I was going to, that that company was the company that I would fight for and work out for the rest of my life. And one part of my job had been to facilitate creative workshops for our clients. And I love that. And one part had been to explore new ways to collaborate and to develop as creatives and as teams and as a company. So it was safe to say I wasn't the quiet one at the company. And I probably don't have to explain to all of you creatives out in here today that when you gather creatives in a group, sparkles tend to fly with strong creative wills and my way or the highway grandstanding. But that part of the job was also the really fun part to see how you could use all that energy to have creatives create some awesome stuff together. But way less fun, way less fun, power struggles, pointless egos, and degrading comments and actions between leaders that creates a culture and environment that slowly eats you up. And just to give you one example, I had just finished a week together with a group of awesome creative students. I see quite a few of you in here today. And at the end of the, of the Friday, there had been high fives flying around. So many high fives and smiles. And one of the students had even drawn a happy face in the palm of my hand and given me a high five. And I had taken a photo of that happy face, posting it and sharing it and say something like, I love creatives and I love my job. And one hour later, I was back at the office and I was told, Krister, I wanted to stop sharing that you're having fun at work. Whoa, had I heard what I just heard? But again, stop sharing that you're having fun at work. Not everyone at the company have as much fun as you do. <laughs> That's dark. And to me it was like, Perhaps we should start there. So over time, I felt myself and my passion and my core values being shipped away piece by piece, day by day. And all that was left of me was a dull, worn down and super confused person with an all time low self-confidence. 
and internal batteries fast approaching empty. But then one morning, Monday morning, on my way to the office to facilitate a workshop, my body just shut down and I froze mid-step. I literally froze mid-step. So I called my wife and asked for help. And somehow, I still don't remember how, I managed to get back home. And I was just drenched in cold sweat. And what followed was months and months of hard personal work. Because what ha had happened, I had hit rock bottom. And my internal batteries wasn't only empty, they were beyond empty. So a lot of hard work to try to get well again. And a fantastic psychologist helped me to try to disentangle the mess I had become. But she also asked some tough questions that made me really reflect on things. But at the same time, I did my best to try to get everything to work with work. Because after all, I had invested 22 years into this company. And then one day, I listened to a podcast where Seth Godin talked about the importance of ignoring sunk cost. And I know it is a weird thing for a Swede to say it doesn't really translate all that well. But basically, it goes something like this. The things that you have invested work-wise and engagement-wise in the past shouldn't hold you back moving forward because the things you have invested that's already has already been spent and you cannot get that back so ignore some cost and his words made something inside of me click and the click was thunderous and i just knew i had to quit but man, for me, taking that final step, that scary step into the unknown, that was really, really tough. But once the decision was made, the relief, I was out. But now what? Which direction should I go? What was I actually good at at that moment? And what should I do? And truth to be told, I had no idea. All I knew was that that, the thing I had before, wasn't it. That's not where I'm going. So if you allow me, I just pack that into a small bowl, compress that and throw that away. And let's go back to Mallorca instead. My daughter Matilda, she had also left her job. So we had traveled together to Mallorca and doing nothing but relaxing, hanging out in a friend's house that we had borrowed, eating super nice Spanish food and enjoying the island and exploring the island together. And for those of you who haven't been to Mallorca, it's pancake flat. Except for the northern part, where this magnificent mountain range is. So one day we, we rented a car and drove into the mountain range to ride in the awesome hairpin roads up the mountains to perhaps find yourself a beach and some ice cream. But when we arrived at the beach, something dawned on us. It was May. It was before the tourist season. So we were completely alone on the beach. And there were absolutely no ice cream there because everything was closed. But now we were here. So we sat down on the beautiful pebble beach, dipping our toes into the water, looking out of the ocean. And after a few minutes, I picked up a stone. And I felt this weight in my hand. And I said out loud, I will never work with people who refuse to see my strengths. I will never again work with people who refuse to see my strengths. And I threw the stone as far into the ocean as I could. And Matilda, she looked at me and said, what the hell? <laughs> we were having a nice day at the beach. And I said, I don't know, but it sure felt really good to throw this shit away. So there we sat on the beach, taking turns, throwing stones into the ocean, sharing what we would never want again or would never do again, like 
I will never work in unkind teams again and destructive teams. Or I will never participate in meaningless and unproductive Monday meetings. Can I get it? Ooh. Yes. Or I will never work in with uh, people who don't share my core values. And I added, I will never, ever, 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 ever again fill out a time report. That's holy to me. So once back at the house I began, uh, in the evening, I realized that our experience at the beach had led to me creating my own to-don't list. And these, the things on that list are the things that I want to stay clear of, as if my life depends on it. Because after all, it does. So having a to-don't list, and there's plenty of things on that list, having a to-don't list is great. But I need something to work towards, something that stokes my fire, something that inspires me. So I began to reflect on all the companies I had met and the awesome creatives I've met throughout the years that had inspired me. So for me, it was time to revisit my heroes to see who of them could become pieces in my sort of jigsaw puzzle of inspiration. So time for four stories and a bonus one and 10 heroes. Are you ready? Yes. Story number one. The ones who tell it like it is. The first one I reached out to once I left my job was my Danish friend, Thomas. This is Thomas. Thomas is a fantastic facilitator that I really respect. And we have collaborated in several projects uh, throughout the years. But Thomas is also great at listening. Listening and then coming back with razor sharp and thought provoking questions and no nonsense feedback. So we met for lunch, eating Spoilbrug, trying my Danish, in, in Copenhagen. And I was still in that confused state. Should I continue or should I do something completely different? And Thomas, he listened and we ate lunch. And at the end of the lunch, he said, Christer, you have what, you, what it takes. You have the knowledge. You don't need, need, need any more training. Go do. So he sort of sent me on my way back to Sweden again. And for me, thinking back to that moment, it was almost like my Karate Kid, Mr. Miyagi moment, uh, approving on and getting his approval, Danish style. But that must have been the best kick in the butt I could get at that point. So, mange mange tak, Thomas. And having people who tell it like it is, that's invaluable. Story number two. The ones who make others sparkle. Because why go mela milk when you can go glitter milk? This is Eva. This is Eva. <laughs> and we met for the first time at a planning meeting up, uh, for my brother's upcoming wedding. I was about to become a best man at the party, and Eva was part of the entertainment team that was going to entertain the party. And at the end of the meeting, Eva stood up and said, guys, great meeting. But I really have to run. I'm late for work and headed for the door. And I called after Eva and said, hey, Eva, where do you work? And Eva answered, hey, Trister, I work for the Gothenburg Symphonics. And I said, without thinking, the way I am, hey, you don't know it yet, but you and I and the Gothenburg Symphonics are going to do a concert together. And Eva said, of course we are. Call me. And headed out the door. So did I call her? Of course I did. So did we do a concert? Of course we did. Three weeks later, the awesome Gothenburg Symphonics played a, a charity concert for the Gothenburg Rescue Mission in the beautiful concert hall. And today Eva works with the uh, opera instead. 
but we continue to do fun, weird projects together, having so much fun. So Eva, you will always be a puzzle piece in my jigsaw puzzle of inspiration. And I'm looking at you because so will Christina. This is Christina. And so many of the creatives in Gothenburg has had Christina as, a mentor, as their mentor at Urebo, our art director copywriter, one of Sweden's absolutely best schools if you want to become an uh, art director or copywriter or creative. And year by year, the energy that Christina puts into that training has lifted it to the level that it is one of Sweden's best schools for that. And the energy and passion she puts into boosting young creatives and making them sparkle is just amazing. And it's so inspiring to see Christina. And then there's Tina Roth Eisenberg. You may not have heard her name. She's known online as Swiss Miss. She's a designer in New York and she is the founder of Creative Mornings. So she is definitely a huge part of that we are here in Gothenburg today and are at Creative Mornings. But Tina and her way of leading her companies with kindness, warm, heart first, and yes, hugs, is just amazing. She's a fantastic person. And I mean, the woman even got a confetti drawer in her Brooklyn office and she's not afraid to use it all the time. So Tina is a huge inspiration and piece in my inspiration puzzle. So people like Eva, Christina, Tina, and friends like Mark, Kalle, and Anna-Lena, people who makes other people sparkle. You gotta love them, but they are so easy to forget. So please make sure to thank them. Story number three. Shit, yeah, fuck no. <laughs> this is Mike O'Neilly. He is the owner and the creative director of a design company on Hawaii called Occupop. And he sure knows how to jumpstart 500 super hungover creatives at a, on a Sunday morning at, at the South by Southwest conference. And he is so much fun to listen to when he delivers his keynotes. But except for jumping them, jumpstarting them in this way, he also has some really good things to say on life and how he acts and how he runs his company. And two things has really stuck with me. And that's two of his mottos. Shit yeah and fuck no. Basically, shit yeah. You know when you are in a situation something triggers you and it feels like I want to do this, but can I? I mean, in Sweden, we have jante. Should I? Could I? In his words, in his world, shit yeah moment, lean into it and run with it. And on the other hand, fuck no moments. You know, the moments where you feel every fiber in your body going like, well, this is not going to end well. Uh, this is not for me. And back away from it, turn away, and run. So shit, yeah, fuck no, four really simple words, but they have had a profound effect on me. So thank you, Michael on Hawaii. And at another conference, I listened to a group of people from an ad agency called um, Whedon Kennedy, and they talked about how they, every few years, pause, put the whole company on pause to rethink their own company evolving it into new versions of themselves. Should we do this or should we do something else? And as a sucker for momentum and continuous change, I loved what I heard. So I've kept that in the back of my memory for so many years. Story number four. I'm a creative, damn it. When I had just started my creative career, Bengan was at the end of his, or at least approaching the end of his. And Bengan, and his way of always being young in his creative mind was just amazing to see. 
and having ideas without any ego whatsoever. And we became friends. And Bengen could come up to you in a corridor, showing you a draft of something he was working on, asking for feedback. And you started to look at it, but before you even had a chance to say something, he had thrown the idea to the floor. What? And he said, I saw it in your eyes. You didn't like it. But don't you worry, a new idea will come to me in a minute. And it always did. And whenever you asked Bengen about his role, he always had the same answer. I'm a creative, damn it. <laughs> so when I grow up, I want to be like Bengen. But until then, what he taught me was to not be so, prote be, so pro be so protective of my ideas because new ideas will al always come in a minute. And yes, Bengen, I'm a creative, damn it. I promised you a bonus one. So the bonus one. You know, sometimes your childhood heroes tend to stay away, only to be replaced by more grown-up heroes. But my biggest hero, I stayed my hero all the way from my early childhood until now, 50 plus years later. Because who can resist a hero who is kind to everyone, except for the bullies and the people who hurt other people. My hero, my life hero, is Bamse. Hands down, 100% true, my life hero is Bamse. Kind to everyone, except for the ones who are not kind. And every time today that I facilitate digital workshops, the thing I see next to my camera is Bamse as a reminder. Because I truly believe that the world needs more kind heroes who stand up against the bullies and the people who hurt other people. So, to don't list and heroes in my puzzle. But where does this all lead to? Well, at the dinner with some awesome ex-colleagues, I asked one of them, so how's work? You know, the thing you ask. And she replied, well, you know, uh, yeah, ups and downs and well. Mm. So I asked again, not expecting much of an answer. So what do you want to do? And she replied, I want to do what you do. And that from a, an ex-colleague and a person I truly admire, admire at work. And she is fantastic to collaborate with. Talk about the shit year moment. So today we are co-founders, me and Anna Maria, and we run a company together, our facilitation company, and we run it together. We constantly push each other to develop even further and the way we work to always push yourself. And we try to run it as a company where you can be your fully self. You don't have to be anyone else, be your fully self and a company which is kind. And we challenge the way we do things because if we were to set up a company, why set it up using all the old structures and the old truths about how a company should be run? Like, do you need to fill out a time report? Well, perhaps if you're running nuts and bolts factory, but I'm not running a nuts and bolts factory. So no, I still don't fill out any time reports and I'm still here. I'm still alive. It's all good. And we have promised each other to never ever stand still by thinking of ourselves in versions, you know, the Whedon and Kennedy thing I talked about that I had in back of my mind. Think of ourselves as versions. We keep the momentum going and we make fast decisions and we try things and we experiment and we do things and we have a lot of fun. We are at version 4.1 now after three years and any day we will upgrade to version five. We'll see what that will be. But most importantly, we have a ton of fun working together. And by the way, I see no contradiction between having fun and being super professional. And for me, having fun 
is also to sneak in at least one Beastie Boy song at every workshop and every meeting, regardless if you work with top level management or wild creatives. Why? Because why not? And what about the name of our company? It's so easy to go for the braggy, the cool, the epic names, but that's not who we are. So we thought the other way around. Who are we and what do we want to stand for? So what if we went for something soft or kind or perhaps even a bit round? So the name of our company is And Friends because we truly believe that together with our awesome client friends and collaborator friends, we can do anything. And after having been told to tone myself down for so long, I'm proud to be running a boldly orange company and the office is filled with color. There's an explosion of color. So we are boldly orange. And actually it is a color when we asked Adnan, the awesome Adnan to, do, to design our logo and the look of uh, our company. There was one thing that were holy. It needs to be boldly orange. And he said, well, that's not the way you go about to decide. And I said, I know, <laughs> but it needs to be boldly orange. So the orange we use is actually called international orange. The NASA spacesuits with, for the astronaut, they use that color. Why? Well, it's specifically designed that color to stand out against all other colors. So international orange and we are bold and we are happy to be an orange company because colors and here i am today sharing my story with you all but how am i how am i how am i doing well if you came up in the street and asked me how i am i would probably say i'm awesome i'm i'm good i'm happy, I'm in a good place, I'm doing a lot of fun stuff at work, and yeah, I'm good. And that's all true. But hitting rock bottom is no child's play. And the effects of me hitting rock bottom are still very much there. And they tend to make themselves known from time to time. And that's something that I will need to work on for a long, long time. So please, people, be kind to each other with your words and your actions, because words and actions matter. And as you probably can tell by now, I love my to-don't list. I hate everything on it, but I love the list itself. To live by it and to always have it as a reminder of where I'm not going because after all beastie boys were right all along because you got to fight for your right to party that's all folks thank you thank you